Anthony Joshua claims that he could fight Deontay Wilder December 2019. Do you believe him? That is the question. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working now. It is the king of this boxing talk, this boxing news and updates. You know, it's your boy, Ego. Anthony Joshua. He had a press conference that continued the press tour, this time in the United Kingdom with Gerald Big Baby Miller. That's his June opponent. He's also trying to invade or whatever you want to call it, America. Shout out to Talk Sport, link in the description. They caught up with him and they sent their, you know, reporters or whatnot to ask him some questions. Joshua says, I'm going to read it and link is in the description so you guys can um, go check it out. Could it be? Anthony Joshua claims there is potential to fight Deontay Wilder in December. Tyson Fury bout could happen sooner. Hmm. You know, obviously interesting. And it says Joshua's next fight seems to see him take on Gerald Miller, which we already know. Let's let's get right into it. Anthony Joshua has told TalkSport he believes he could fight Deontay Wilder in December. IBF, WBA, WBO belt holder Joshua has been looking for his shot at becoming undisputed heavyweight champion. With Deontay Wilder standing his way of achieving this and holds the final belt, the WBC belt. AJ's plans have been scuppered by the WBC ordering a rematch between Wilder and Tyson Fury following their controversial draw last December. Now, I don't agree with the article just off of that. Or I don't agree with this portion of the article, I guess you could say. Joshua, all this scupper, you know, Joshua could have fought Wilder last year before he fought Povetkin and then we wouldn't have worried about this fight you see on screen Tyson Fury stepping up and then we wouldn't worry we wouldn't have had that and then you know ESPN they could have signed Tyson Fury back when he was fighting Steve Cunningham but it took for this fight for them to see the Tyson Fury story and you know the getting up in the 12th round to show interest in him so really this was a ripple in the pond effect and it was all created by Joshua because had Joshua done what the fans wanted him to do, which was fight Wilder last year, then we would already be talking not about Joshua versus Gerald Miller and reconstructing Miller's face and all this stuff. We'd be talking about Wilder versus AJ rematch at this point, you know, and it wouldn't be the news wouldn't be AJ versus Gerald Miller. You know, is Wilder going to fight Brazil or who is he going to fight? And Tyson Fury just got this ESPN deal. Does that separate this? It's so this all is predicated from AJ's side because he had the opportunity and he was the the Willy Wonka. He's the guy that had the Willy Wonka gold ticket. But let me continue. Fury signed a new deal with U.S. broadcaster ESPN last week, which I just mentioned, seemingly put any future bouts between the trio and Jeopardy. However, Joshua is optimistic of fights in the future happening. And Joshua said there will be a window of opportunity to arrange a December fight with Deontay Wilder. Read this closely. December fight with Deontay Wilder and also claimed a fight against British boxer Tyson Fury could happen sooner. Speaking to Talk Sport at the press conference, AJ said, quote, in terms of becoming undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, it's hard because I've got until June 1st and I need to focus on that. Let's say we have a crystal ball and I beat Miller up. We could have that fight wilder in December if we could put whatever issues there are to bed. But in terms of Tyson Fury, I think that could happen sooner. He's a UK based fighter, isn't he? I feel like he should be easier. That should be easier because the fight would be in the UK. It would be easier to work with a broadcaster in the UK and you've seen you have the best fight fans in the world and the biggest sporting events in the world. Joshua is next in action against Big Baby Miller in June, right? It said he's keen to stress he's concentrated on his next fight, Madison Square Garden MSG. Joshua went on to say that there have been strides made in negotiations with Wilder's camp despite deadlock in previous type talks. Quote, even though it's New York MSG, there's not 90,000 people there, so I feel everything is based around the UK market. How close are we with Wilder? It shouldn't be an issue. Of everything we know and the mistakes and the positives we made to get to this point, we're at least where we're talking and with Furious, the same thing with the fight in the UK. 
And this is just a tweet from them saying the same thing. Let's say I beat Miller and win. We could fight Wilder in December. And I guess this is the video of him saying it. How near are we to seeing the Fury Wilder type fights? In terms of like being, becoming undisputed. You're not even looking at him, <laughs> what? It's hard because I've got until June 1st, so I need to focus on June 1st. So however near I am, let's say we have... What? Where's the water? In terms of Fury, I think Fury can happen sooner. But to bed. But in terms of Fury... So it's basically the same thing that I'm reading here to you. He said, it's quite straightforward. We made them offers and it's up to them to say, no, this is what we don't like and this is what we expect. And then we say, okay, we can afford to put that forward and we can afford to let the broadcasters air it out and move forward. I'm scheduled to fight June 1st, Wilder and Fury negotiating and whoever comes out on top, we've got another date set in December. So, you know, AJ, this is my thing with AJ. He keeps saying, I'd rather fight these great, incredible fights that the world could get behind. But when it comes down to it, one way or another, no matter who it is, it's not those people that he's listing. So it's like the boy who cried wolf. You know, I'm at the point where you just got to show me, you know, if you can, if it's so he making it, he's, he's like, he's, he's doing this PC thing. Like he's saying politically correct things that you want to hear as a boxing fan oh yeah it's, it's so easy i have a date uh april 13th you know he's saying this stuff and it sounds great and some of the fans are even running with it but i see beyond that because the stuff he said hasn't always translated into what's happening like he said before gerald miller fight was announced right before the flyers were made they were asking him Brock on the zone it's on their youtube they said who you want to fight if wilder ends up fighting fury which everybody thought was going to happen wilder fury too who do you want to fight next he's like his first name out of his mouth luis king kong ortiz that's a good fight and he was on like the breakfast club or sway recently when he came to new york for the presser and he said luis ortiz's name why do you keep mentioning luis king kong ortiz he's talking greasy about you saying you ducked wilder saying you don't want it with me you know he's saying i'm an old man and no matter what my age is i'll still work him over and you're mentioning this, this seems like clout chasing because he keeps mentioning a fight with Luis Ortiz. But why didn't you target him over Gerald Miller? Miller is not your mandatory, you know. In fact, Dominic Brazil, at least one of the sanctioning bodies, or excuse me, not Dominic Brazil, Dillian White with one of the sanctioning bodies is ranked higher than Gerald Miller. So why didn't you fight at least Dillian White, which the whole world thought you were fighting? So, you know, I'm at the point where with Joshua, it sounds good, you won and disputed. And he's making it sound easy, but it's always a problem. He's like, oh, it's enough food. It's enough food. It's mad. It's, en it's enough food to eat. But it doesn't sound like it's enough food because Dillian White's complaining about pay. You know, Luis Ortiz got offered a Dillian White from your, you know, the same parties involved. You know, got offered a fight with uh, Dillian White or Luis Ortiz got a Dillian White offer. And he said the, the money was funny. You know, Wilder was complaining about the flat fee. So, you know it doesn't it sounds good but it doesn't sound like that's the case oh yeah it's enough it's enough food to go around it's enough it doesn't sound like it because people keep complaining that there's being offered peanuts and then you know joshua like i said some of the stuff he's saying sounds so scripted sounds like he's reading a script and it's like a rehearsed play or something he's talking about a fight with tyson fury would be easier he said it would be easier than a, a deontay wilder fight because they're both based out of the uk right that to me i don't see that because tyson fury his big announcement was he had teamed up him frank warren queensberry promotions teamed up with a u.s broadcaster so that could complicate things presumably for wilder because he already has a u.s broadcaster you see the first wilder fury fight was no problem because wilder had been fighting on showtime and tyson fury had been fighting on frank warren cards and that's on bt sports so you had no conflict there you had Showtime, who takes care of the U.S. stuff, primarily. I'm not saying they, you know, they just did Chris Eubank um, versus James DeGale. But I, what I mean is their home base and majority, like their their immediate market, ITV and Showtime, that, you know, that's something that they've dabbled in. Like they covered AJ versus Charles Martin, AJ versus Joseph Parker in these fights. But their immediate market is the American market. That's where they're founded, based out of cbs is from etc that's the parent company so if anything 
Fury announcing the ESPN deal kind of creates that riff where we don't know if the Wilder fight's easy to make. But for Joshua, what he's saying is, hey, in terms of Tyson Fury, I think a fight could happen soon. Look, he's telling you this. That's what I'm saying. That's why it sounds scripted. He says, in, in terms of Tyson Fury, I think it could happen sooner because he's a UK-based fighter, isn't he? But there's actually, in my view, more complications there because you guys, true, you're both UK fighters, but you're both UK fighters who have fought historically on different UK networks that don't particularly work together. You know, BT Sport. So BT and Sky, Sky Sports, BT Sport, right? Those are two different entities. It's like HBO and Showtime in America. So he's saying that I, I would see the Wilder fight is probably easier to make with Joshua, you know, than, than the UK because clearly AJ versus Tyson Fury is a UK fight. And then the big, the big issue would be how would they do that a joint venture? You know, furthermore, isn't this what AJ Man fans have said regarding the $50 million? They said, oh, the $50 million, AJ couldn't accept it. Why not? Because Frank Warren said the money came from BT Sport. So, you know, it's the AJ fan base, a lot of them are all over the place. You know, one minute they say that he can't accept $50 million because the money was, they came up with, Heyman came up with the money, Wilder came up with the $50 million from BT Sport, right? So he couldn't accept it. Now AJ's telling you that it's easier to make a Tyson Fury fight because we're both from the UK. And we know, he, he even says it, he says it's easier because the fight would be in the UK. But if that's the case, then why couldn't you take the $50 million from BT Sport, allegedly? I don't even know if that's true, but allegedly. I'm just going off of what the fans have said. You know, so this whole thing is a mess. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get none of the marquee major fights that we want until this is sorted out. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Joshua seems optimistic, but again, he's also been in the, he had that do-rag on, a black do-rag, you know, it looked like he was in a white car, white upholstery in the past. And he said, I don't know, oh, I don't want to fight Alexander Povetkin. I'm not looking to fight Povetkin. I want, I want to fight Walter, right? And then he fought Povetkin. So seeing is believing. Let me know what you guys think. He's optimistic that he, uh, he could fight Wilder in December show me like I always say LSI let's see it will Joshua become undisputed this year you know and, and he can't even look too much past Gerald Miller because I think that's a tougher fight than a lot of people are are and he's kind of alluded to that in this interview like hey I don't want to you know disrespect Gerald Miller in that way by looking past him but you know I the heavyweight division there's a lot of issues we got to see how this all plays out Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.